In September, I traveled to Natural Bridges State Beach in Santa Cruz, California to present a watercolor workshop to 12 lucky watercolor artists. The following is a speeded up video of my morning painting demonstration of the view looking south toward the natural bridge. The other bridge collapsed years ago. Before I did this painting, I did a field study, which is on another demo video on my YouTube channel. You may want to watch the field study demo before you see me doing the final painting. We were sitting on a rock shelf with a great view of the beach. You will hear the crashing of the waves and my description of what I am doing as I paint. So I got it. Usually it takes about three weddings, about three weddings with water before you can get it until it's ready to because the water soaks in really fast. It's a big brush. Yeah, well, the bigger, the bigger it is, the faster it goes on, huh? Yeah, big piece of paper. Oh. Is that a half sheet? It's a half sheet, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to take some of this color here. Is this what you meant when you said to lay out your paint, or is this the, just because this is an older paint palette? No, I want you to have your, I didn't want you to take class time to put your paint out, that's all. Because some people come with an empty palette and then they take the tubes and they squeeze them out. But when you do that, sometimes the paint is just too, it's just too moist. Okay. And then you get, end up having a hard time because you end up painting with pigment. And I don't want you to paint with pigment, I want you to paint with water. So when, when we do watercolor, we paint with water. Water is water and then color. So I'm trying to get this, um, I'm trying to get enough water and color on here so that I can, okay, let's see what we can, let's see what we can do here. Oh boy. So what happens in the sun, things dry really fast here in the sun. I'm, I'm letting this run now. Let's see what that does. If I, you have to be really careful that you don't paint on it after it's, after it starts to dry. So now I'm going to let, see if I can get it. See, look at that, see? Now, I have to be careful. I kind of like that, but I kind of like that running down like that. I, I like that, what's happening there. See how it's coming down? I like, I like that. Yeah. And over here, I said, I like that. <laughs> I am doing it on purpose. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> this is on purpose. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just continue to let that go, and like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop here, and I'm gonna take my my Chinese brush. Let's see, I have to get my rag here, and I'm going to come in and. With the point of the brush now, I'm going to try and just, just taking off my drip. I like this right here where it's white. There we go. Now, I, I think what I'll do is just, I'm going to lay this down in the sun now, and it'll be dry in just a, just a couple minutes. We'll just let that dry. So that's my sky. So when you get the sky to where you like it, put your paper flat and then lay it, lay it down flat and let it dry that way. And then it won't run anymore. There's a little something scratch or something in there. I don't know what happened there, but that's the way it goes. Maybe we'll put a bird there or something. The sky, is that going to determine the colors that you use on the rocks? And the, uh... um, I'm trying to use kind of the same colors that I used in my field study. The question is, does the sky help me determine the colors I'm going to use in the painting? To some extent, yeah. And in the water too, I'm going to use I'm going to use the same blue in the water, but I'm going to I'm going to be uh, putting some green with it. Now, when you determine this area, sort of the wet it sand. How did this you is going to be white in here, and then some sand over here, and this will be some gray, some of that gray area right there. So the gray, are you going to mix in a gray scale with some with some of these colors, or just? just I'll just mix gray. the gray with uh, with cobalt blue and probably burnt sienna. Yeah. I forgot, I forgot to tell you I was painting. So. 
So now I'm going to put a little bit darker, some darker blue in here. And I'm going to leave some whites over here where it's hitting the rock over here. And this one here, right coming in there. It's in here. Take some of this out, the Kleenex. Okay, well you see the density gradient. When you do the density gradient, you do want, you, do, you want the bands of color to be touching each other so that, so that it doesn't look like white strips between back here. So be careful that they're touching. There's a little bit of white separation, but not very much, just a tiny, tiny bit, just a very tiny bit of separation here in there, very tiny. I could put my water here too. See, that's all, there's white in there too. And that'll be a big shadow in there. And then this, this one here is gonna be a little bit lighter. And for now, I'm gonna leave that white right there because I'm gonna come in with a darker shadow under that. See how it's really dark on, in, inside there but I'll probably wait until I do my rock and put my uh, reflection on the water before I put that in. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to see if I can approximate the ocean here. This is always real tricky because you can overpaint this so easily. Okay, let's see what we're gonna do here now. So you wanna get the feeling of the water, but the water is very, very horizontal, so You need to get a lot of white over here. So we're really, we're really painting with the whites now. I kind of like that. I'm trying to get rid of these whites on the edge of my paper because they, they attract, they attract the eye. The whites on the edge of the paper attract the eye. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to move this over to here. Okay, let's get rid of this white over here. I like that so far. I don't like this piece right here. I'm going to fix that. That's better. I think I'm going to stop with the water there and just uh, the rest of it, this part is all going to be uh, sand and, and gray tones and, and water puddles. I'll do that later. I am going to remove this. When you have water on the edge of your paper, you can just take your brush like this, and you can just take this, the side of the brush and go like that, and that, that should, should, should get it off. See, that just takes it right off. And hello, I don't want you on... I recently got stung, and man, it hurt. Oh, yeah. I got stung right in my finger there. And the, I, was, I, was, I was in the swimming pool. So I think that's, I think that's all I'm gonna do with the water right now. I might go back in later and put in some darks, but I'm definitely gonna put in some, some reflections from the, you can see the reflections on the water, and I'll put those in here later. So I'm gonna start painting the, um, the, the bridges now and, the, and that part. Let's see here. Maybe I need to get that toned down a bit. That's better. I may, I may go back over this later because it's, it's a bit light. Yeah, that's better. That's better. I like that better. There's a little bit of water splashing up right there. I want to have the water coming in there. See, just get some water lapping up against that. Let's 
right about here. So that's that. And then you, with this brush, you can get these textures. I don't want to take too much off the top. I want to keep that pretty, pretty light up there. But this looks a little bit too mechanical. I want to get rid of some of that. I like that. And I think my, my hole, my hole in my rock is too big. So let's take that down a bit. Maybe more like this. I'm gonna get that really dark. So really dark. Where's my, there we go. And then we have that shadow on the water there. I want to spend I wanted to spend some time on this because this is the feature in the painting and I want it to look good. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to leave that white. So I have a saying that I use and it's, if it's white, if it's light, leave it white. So anything that's light in the painting, you just leave white. And you can always get rid of your whites at the end if you want to. But it's better to save them than to get rid of them early. So, so I have a lot of white in here. I got white there. And uh, so now I'm gonna, I'll paint this rock over here to match this one. And then I'll do the sand. This angle, you have to be careful, on the beach, see on the, angle, on the beach it's got this angle, and then it comes kind of down flat here. Got to be careful of that angle. Boy, these uh, yellow jackets or whatever, they really like my painting. Notice that I don't rinse my brush very much. I, went, I just went to get some green, and I didn't take the paint off my brush, I just went to get some green and I, you don't have to keep, I see a lot of people mixing, rinsing the brush, rinsing the brush, rinsing the brush after every, for every single color that you use, but I don't bother to do that. I don't think it's necessary. So what if the color I have on the brush already gets in with the other color? It just makes, it just makes a better painting that way. There, I got, got my little green up there. Now I'm going to put some more of these shadows in here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. All right, some sand, huh? Get in touch with that sundown fellow as he tiptoes across the sand. <laughs> He's got a million kinds of stardust. Pick your favorite brand and dream when you're feeling blue. Oh, you don't know that? <laughs> no, that was the lead-in. It is, it's just a lead-in. <laughs> so there's some sand. Look at that. Some more sand here, and another sand, some more sand here. Okay, I think, okay, I'm gonna just leave, I think I'm gonna leave that white there. Lots of white coming in there, and then I have to get some of this gray, gray stuff in here, don't I? Let's get some gray in here. So I'm using uh, cobalt blue and burnt sienna to make my gray. And let's see, just gonna come right up to the, so I got water coming in here and then 
gee, and then it comes out and it's, oh man, it's so nice, but, but how to paint it. So this is a really great tool, Kleenex. Really good, a really good tool, yeah. So one of the tricks to painting watercolor is to have your paper tilted up. If your paper tilted up, you almost it just paints itself. So that's the uh, reflection on the water. I want to get rid of that puddle right there. Now let me look at it from a distance. I need to get some more dark in here. Let's see how that looks. That's better. Maybe some up in here. Get rid of this drip here. I think I'll stop right now and uh, let it uh, let it kind of just take a break from it. I'm gonna. One thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take uh, take this out. Yeah, and I think I'll, I'll also take some of this out here, and then I'm also gonna take some out in here too. I like the softer, I like those soft edges there. I like, so this right here, I want this to be a soft edge here. See, that's nicer, this is a soft edge like that. And then maybe a little bit of softening right here too. When I did these, I thought it's a little bit hard. I thought, so I like that better. Maybe a little bit more in here. There, that's better. I like that better. And then here, see how you can do that? You can just, so I like that better now. I'm just trying to get it so it, almost ready for a new piece of Kleenex. <laughs> I gotta wait for that to dry to go back into there. It's really important to stand back and look at it from a distance. I wanna get that to come, come in. be friends with everything, everybody else over here. Let's soften this up a bit here. Maybe right here. I want to do a little bit of, uh, of uh, shat water shadow. So I'm going to try to do that here. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll just do it here. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do it right now because I want I want this to dry here because I'm putting my hand in it and I'm going to spoil it so but I want to get some water shadows on here but I think you should go and paint now. <laughs> here there was a break while I gave people feedback on their paintings. I came back to this painting and painted in a figure and its reflection where I had left space for that. Thanks to University Art in Redwood City for promoting this workshop. It is a privilege to share this information with you on YouTube.